<laughs> sure thing, yeah. Greetings, everyone. In today's video, I'll be discussing Snowbreak's Gradient of Souls update and sharing my personal ratings for each aspect of it. I'm jealous Keep of in you. mind, these ratings are based solely on my own feelings, so it's perfectly at? fine if you have a different opinion. You think I get jealous? Starting off with characters, Cherno Enigma is one of the most enjoyable characters they released so far. Damage from her weapon will add a dot effect to the target. You can literally shoot them once and just walk away. Her active skill deploys these black orbs that pulls enemies towards them, deals AOE damage over time, and can be detonated at will by Cherno to deal a massive amount of damage to the surrounding targets. Her ultimate is one of the best looking ultimates in the game. It's like she's descending from heaven, summons a moon while raining down bullets like an AC-130. I honestly don't know how they're going to top this one. Cherno Enigma is a solid 5 out of 5. The next character released this patch is Enya Exuvia, and she's completely free. She is a skill damage buffer and a healer. Her healing is kind of whatever because it required the usage of her ultimate and only heals the active operative. Since I play with a controller, I have no idea how to activate this ultimate while she is off field. So if you guys have any tips on that, I would greatly appreciate it. But if such a thing is not yet possible, the easiest way to implement it would be tap the active skill button to use the active skill and holding the active skill button to activate the ultimate or hold whatever input switches Enya in to activate the ultimate while she remains off field. Her skill damage buff is pretty great. I'll give her that one. Simply add as much alignment index as you can on her talents. Activate her support skill and stay inside the ring for the buff. As you guys can see here, the damage is noticeable. This character is free and she's a pretty solid support, so I'll give her a five out of five as well. Moving on to some actual content, starting with Star Master AKA, the Pokemon mode. This mode is what we in the science community would refer to as hot garbage. Okay, okay, let me explain. It's not that bad, but it could have been so much better if they just did the following. One, replace the current map with the Ancient Isle Survey open world map. That map is one of the most beautiful maps they've made so far, and it is teeming with enemy encampments. There are also chesses everywhere on that map. Maybe opening them could have given extra XP to speed up our Trailblaze levels. The current map is a complete ghost town, and I get sleepy just minutes after loading into it, which is why I stopped playing after getting to Trailblaze 5. Any more and I'll start losing what little brain cells I have left. Two, add co-op. Even if we had to limit the number of captured enemies to one per player, just having someone else in the world with you would make playing the mode feel a lot less isolated and pointless. Obviously, you should still be able to go in solo if that's what you wanna do. Three, throw in some high value targets, enemies with a lot of HP and hits like a truck. Just add Deed of Blessing and Digi Cash as reward for defeating them. Overall, I do like the idea of the mode, but the execution was fairly poor, so it's a one out of five for me. The next game mode is Void of Dread. Personally, I am not a big fan of these modes. It just forces you to fight the same boss five plus times, and time gates each difficulty for some reason. The boss's design is cool, but this is a two out of five for me. Our next game mode is Infinite Darkness. The map is absolutely beautiful. Gameplay-wise, an absolute snooze fest. Again, a little co-op here could have gone a long way. With a boss or two every five waves, but I'll give it a three out of five just for the presentation. Oh, great paradoxical labyrinth. I freaking hate this game mode with a passion. So I was not looking forward to this Shadow Raid mode, but damn, this is actually a banger. They need to go ahead and replace the standard version with this new mode. I still have some issues with it. Picking a buff after every battle is just not it. I feel like there is a way to have the roguelike experience without constantly disrupting the flow of combat. Also, why can't we just walk through the portal to enter the next room? I know this is just nitpicking, but it's right there. Just let us walk through, screw the buffs. Overall though, it's a solid five out of five for me. Endless Battle is not out yet, but it is one we've seen before. In fact, this is one of my favorite maps. Because of this, I'll give it a three out of five. Slowing down the combat to pick buffs after every wave just kills the momentum for me, but it's a great map. Overall, we're looking at a 3.5 out of five for the Gradient of Souls update. 
Of course, like I mentioned before, this is just my own opinion on things. This is actually pretty good because I am pretty sure based on my score, most of you would rate it even higher. So what would you guys rate the Gradient of Souls update? Leave your answer in the comments below until we meet again.